Good morning everybody and uh, let me continue the discussion on gate realizations, logic gate realizations using circuits. So today I shall discuss about a TTL NAND gate, a transistor transistor logic NAND gate and uh, here is the circuit, it is a 3 input NAND gate where the inputs are inputs A, B, C are applied here and the output is taken from this transistor's collector here. Uh, please note that it, it uses diodes as well as transistors in the circuits and a few resistances. Now with these three inputs, these three inputs sometimes it is uh, realized using a, uh, this is, uh, this is a diode logic circuit that is used here. Instead of a diode logic circuit here, uh, including this transistor and these uh, diodes, we can replace it by a multi-input emitter. This is a PNP multi-input emitter. Now this can be connected to the transistor here. So this diodes and the resistance and the resistance here. So this part can be replaced by a multi input or multi emitter transistor and it can be connected to Q1. Now let me explain this first. When any one of, when, when all the inputs are at logic level 1, the the transistor Q1 is biased through these resistances and it is forward biased because the emitter is connected through 5 kilo ohms to the ground. Hence Q1 is the Q1 conducts and when Q1 conducts there is emitter current that flows and the emitter current causes substantial amount of voltage drop here across the 5 kilo ohm resistance and in turn Q2 is also on and the Q2 conducts and when Q2 conducts the Q3 also conducts because the Q2 is connected, uh, the Q3 is connected to the emitter of Q2 and because of this reason Q3 is on, Q3 is, Q3 in fact goes into saturation and when Q2 is conducting, Q3 is on no doubt and when Q2 conducts, so this voltage drop across this 1.4K is such that Q2 is almost saturated. And when Q2 is saturated, when Q2 is saturated, so this voltage is insufficient to drive Q4 on. That means Q4 is cut off. Since Q4 is cut off, that's because this voltage drop is very small. When Q2 conducts, Q3 is forward biased and this voltage drop is of the order of 0.7 volts, right? And when this is 0.7 volts, 
and if this is 0.2 volts because this is in saturation it is about 0.2 volts the voltage at this point with respect to ground is 0 0.7 plus 0.2 is 0 0.9 volts and this 0 0.9 volts should be sufficient to forward by q forward and this diode and this saturation voltage and please note that this 9 volts is not sufficient to to drive them forward bias because the total voltage of 0.9 volts is less than the cut-in voltages of these two put together. Since this voltage is less than the cut-in sum of the cut-in voltages here, Q4 is off and this diode is also off. Hence, this transistor is off and this one conducts and since this one conducts and this one is off, it acts like a very high impedance uh, resistance and it uh, drives only very small amount of current. Hence, hence, so this current is very small and this Q3 goes into saturation. And since Q3 is in saturation, the output voltage is of the order of 0.2 volts. So this one tries to draw current from the circuit and for this circuit to give current, so this has to be more than 0.5 and this has to be more than 0.5. So it tries to have a large voltage drop across it in the process of allowing more current. But there is no voltage drop uh, that is possible because this is tied to 0.9 volts. So minus 0.5, minus 0.5, it has to be a negative voltage. That is the situation. So what you get is a low output voltage. So when all the inputs are high, you will get a low output voltage. So that's what, that's how a TTL gate works. So when the inputs are, all the inputs are high, the output is a low. Now, if any one of the inputs is tied to the ground, then the voltage drop across uh, at the base of Q1 to ground would be equal to a diode drop because this diode conducts from the 5 volt supply through this diode to the ground. Hence, the voltage drop across the diode will be of the order of 0.6 or 0.7 volts. Hence, this point has a potential of about 0.6 volts. And if this is 0.6, Again, for this to conduct, so this is just at the verge of conduction, this transistor with the emitter current being almost zero. And with the emitter current being almost zero, so the voltage drop here is insufficient to drive this on. And similarly, this voltage drop is insufficient to drive this on. Therefore, Q2 is off and Q3 is also off whereas this Q1 is just at the verge of conduction, Q2 and Q3 are off. And when Q2 and Q3 are off, please note that this is, this transistor Q4 is connected to this 5 volts through this small resistance 1.4 kilo ohms. And if there is some load resistance, this load resistance acts like an emitter resistance for Q4 and so this is biased in this way. Hence, Q4 conducts because it is forward biased. The base emitter junction is forward biased through this. So, because of this reason, the output voltage level will be high. Uh, let me explain how much is the output voltage level. So, because of uh, this resistance is also very small, this resistance is very small, whatever is the IB that flows that IB causes some voltage drop through this and IB depends on this IE here and IE depends on the load resistance and if IE is of the order of milliamperes, so this is of the order of tens of microamperes. With tens of microamperes flowing through this, the voltage drop is very small of the order of, uh, it is of the order of a fraction of a volt and when this is a a fraction of a volt. So this is also of the order of same almost 5 volts or 4.5 volts minus one diode drop 
and another diode drop. So you will get about three to four volts of output here, which is equal to high, which is high, logic level high. So if any one of the outputs is a zero, output is inputs is a zero, output is logical one. The same thing happens even when two of these inputs are zeros. So please note that because of this transistor and the, you are taking the output from its emitter. So this one is like an emitter follower and it can drive large number of loads. It can drive large number of num number of loads and current flows in this direction. And when all are ones, this is off and Q3 is in saturation, it will take current into it. It will, it sinks current from the, from the load. And it can sink a large amount of current because IB into beta is the, can be the collector current. It can sink any amount of collector current, a good amount of collector current. It can be zero also, but at the same time, it can sink a lot of current also. Hence, uh, this circuit has the advantage of capability to drive good num uh, a good number of loads or a, a small load resistance. So this is what uh, TTL NAND gate is. And usually, so this is implemented, this is implemented, this circuit is implemented through uh, a transistor circuit of this type. In fact, these two transistors can be replaced by, uh, in fact, including this transistor, the whole thing can be replaced by the uh, multi emitter gate. When any one of the inputs or uh, when all the inputs are connected to one, please note that it is an NPN transistor. And this being connected to, through this resistance, this being connected to through a 4K resistance actually. So let me give the overall circuit of a TTL gate. So this is the actual TTL gate. a 4K resistance. The collector is connected to this transistor here. It's almost the same circuit. This is the output here. It's uh, supply voltage is four, uh, five volts. This is 4K, 1.4K, 100 ohms, very small resistance, of course. This is 1K. When all the inputs are ones, so this PN junction is, uh, this one acts like a diode, like in the previous case. And uh, when all the inputs are ones, this diode is, so this diode is reverse biased if the base potential is smaller than the input potential. If the base potential of this multi emitter transistor is smaller than the input potential, so this transistor is cut off. And that's what happens when, so this diode this PN junction diode is forward bias and that one, this one supplies current to this transistor. Please note that this is of the order of 0.6 volts. So that means the drop across 1K is of the order of 0.6 or 0.7 volts. So this is also of the order of 0.6 or 0.7 volts. And this is a PN junction and this is also of the order of 0.6 volts because of which 
this voltage is of the order of 1.8 volts. And when the input is tied to logic level 1, this transistor, this diode or PN junction of the transistor is reverse biased, emitter is reverse biased, but this PN junction is forward biased and it acts like a diode. Now current flows through this and this current drives this transistor on and the its emitter current drives a sufficient voltage and drives a, drives a current through this transistor and this transistor is also on. Therefore, it goes to saturation. Now, because of this voltage drop here, so this transistor is off like in the previous case and hence this one acts like a high impedance load and this one is on and the output is low, logic level low. And when any one or more of the inputs are at ground potential, the so the, this transistor turns on and when this transistor turns on, it tries to draw current out of this transistor. It tries to draw a collector current out of this transistor. The, its collector current is equal to the base current of this transistor with opposite sign. So can it allow any current to be drawn out of the base? So it does not uh, allow any current to draw out of the base. Therefore, the collector current is almost 0 and this one acts like a PN junction and it conducts. And when you try to when you try to draw a current out of this base of an NPN transistor here, this transistor goes off. Therefore, this is also off. Hence, this one conducts and you will get logic level 1 at its output. And this output connection is known as a totem pole connection. And this connection helps in driving large amount of large load currents or it has capability to drive low load resistances. So this is what a TTL NAND gate is. Having discussed about uh, the realizations of gates, we shall proceed with the discussion on flip flops. As the name indicates, flip flops do flip and flop between two states. So these are sequential circuits and they can be used as semiconductor memories. A flip-flop is usually it has a few inputs like in the case of an SR flip-flop it has S input and R input and uh, it has output Q, Q bar and when this is 1 and when this is 0, you have an output of 1 and 0. This Q and Q bar are complementary to each other. So when the S input is set to 1, output will go to level 1. And when the, when the set input is 1 and reset input is 0, you will get 1, 0. When on the other hand, when the reset input is 1, and the set input is 0, so the flip-flop gets reset to 0 and that means Q bar would be automatically equal to 1. And when you apply an input which is 0, 0, the output does not change, output status does not change, it remains uh, in the previous state itself. So this is what is an SR flip-flop. Its truth table can be expressed in this, uh, can be written like this. It has S input and R input. At nth stage, if the inputs are Sn and Rn, then the output 
in the next stage qn plus 1 can be given in this fashion. Ideally, it has a clock also, clock applied to it. Now, when Xn is made to be 0 and Rn is also made to be 0, and then after a clock pulse is applied, so this would remain, even after the clock pulse, it will remain in the same state. If it happens to be Q happens to be 1, Q will continue to be 1. Q happen to be 0, Q, Q will continue to be 0. Now, if set is 1 and reset is 0, so q n plus 1 will be 1. If this is 0 and this is reset input is 1, q will become 0. And for 0, 0 state, for 1, 1 state, output is not defined. So, this is what a flip flop is. And as I mentioned, this is a clock input. Clock input means it is a binary input with narrow pulses like this. So, this is a clock waveform. It is a train of narrow pulses with output voltage sufficiently high. For the, it has a short pulse and it remains at zero potential for one clock period and in the next clock period again it gives one narrow pulse and remains zero and of, uh, for the next period it again gives a pulse and remains zero. It is a periodic waveform like this. It is a periodic pulse train which define which defines the 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 frequency of operation of the circuit. For each clock pulse, you have a state defined, output state defined. Output state is this logic level 1 or 0 in this particular case. Now, at nth stage, if Sn and Rn at that nth stage, if they happen to be 0, 0, and at the n plus 1 instant when the clock pulse is applied, the state for the n plus 1 clock pulse remains as the previous output state itself. But when Sn is made to be 1 and Rn is made to be 0 and then when the n plus 1 clock, clock pulse is applied at that instant, then the output will change whatever was the initial stage was the previous stage, the output will now change to 1. Similarly, for 0, 1 output will change to 0 and 1, 1 is not defined. So, this is what a typical clock SR flip-flop is. It is known as an SR clocked flip-flop. Yes. What is the reasoning behind The question is, what is the reasoning behind setting and resetting? Resetting is, is uh, an initially relaxed state. So, resetting means to resetting it to the initial state. In an initially real relaxed system, in an initially relaxed state, you have an output 0. So, whenever you reset it to the ground level, so the output will be, has to be 0. And setting is to change its state and set to something different and that is setting it to 1. So, because of this simple reason, the nomenclature used is that set reset. And please note that you have a timing control here. The clock is controlling when these states are to be changed from input to output, depending on the input, when the output state is going to change. And as long as the clock pulse is not applied, the output is independent of the input. So, it is a sequential circuit. It is also known as a sequential circuit because when you can apply some input, apply a clock, the input will change to the output sequentially. Then you can change the inputs again, apply the next clock pulse 
and uh, the output will further change and it works in a sequential manner. Hence, it is also known as a sequential circuit. And it acts like a one bit memory because if you want to store a one or zero input in this flip flop and uh, make it remain in that state, what you can do is you can change the inputs, apply a clock, you can apply that proper input, apply a clock pulse and this gets latched in to the output. And now even if you change the input, its content does not change as long as you do not apply a pulse. Hence, you can store some pattern if you can store a 1 in one flip flop. If you use another flip flop you can and input a 0 there, you can store a 0 there. If I have a logic uh, uh, a binary number like 1101 to be stored, I will use 4 such flip flops, feed the first bit to this, first flip flop, second bit to second flip flop and so on, this 4 inputs can be. Uh, 4 bits can be fed to 4 flip flops and give one clock pulse and it will latch the inputs and it will store the inputs. And whenever I want to retrieve what was stored, I can sense the outputs and then find out what is stored there. So, this storage can be changed by changing the inputs again and applying a clock. So, Uh, the question is when, where does the uh, transition occur during the rising edge of the clock or the falling edge of the clock? Uh, there are different flip flops available. Some flip flops are made to work during the rising edge of a clock pulse and some flip flops are made to work during the falling edge of a, um, of a clock pulse. These are edge sensitive flip flops, some are rising edge sensitive and some are falling edge sensitive. Hence, a flip flop can be used as a one bit memory and it is also known as a latch because you can latch digital data, binary data into it. Now, let us look into the circuit diagram of a typical flip flop. Let us look into it and how it can be realized using gates. Please note that you have we have discussed about how gates can be realized using diodes or mass devices or transistors and combinations of these. Now, given such gates, we can realize the flip flops. So, let me now discuss about a latch, which is an important constituent of a flip flop. It uses two NAND gates. with a crisscross connection between one's output and the other's input. So, if you call this as Q, so this is Q bar and you have input A1 here and A2 here. Now, this NAND gate is being used as a NOT gate. If it is a two input NAND gate, please note that a two input NAND gate when the inputs are connected together, it acts like a NOT gate. Now, to this, uh, this NAND gate is now functioning as a NOT gate and if this happens to be, if this input happens to be 1 at any instant, that means here also it is 1. With this as 1, the output will now will be, it will be 0 here and when this is 0, so this output is also 0 and when this is 0, this is 1. Therefore, it is consistent, the logic is consistent and the circuit can remain in this kind of a stage, state. When this output is 1, this output is 0 and vice versa, if this happens to be 1, say this is a 1, 
which means this is a 1. This would be now 0 and this would be 0 and this would remain 1. So, this circuit upon power on will go to either logic level 0 or 1 and it remains there. It acts like a 1 bit memory and it remains in that situation, in that condition. Uh, there is no input yet coming here. So, I have given the circuit only to this is not a full SR flip flop. So, I am developing an SR flip flop from this. So, please note that here this circuit can store some pattern and it remains in that pattern and if it is a 1 it becomes a 0 and vice versa. Now, if I apply some control to the input and use another NOT NAT gate, NOT gate at its input using realizing NAT using NAND gates like this and if this is set input and this reset input and here I use it, use a NAND gate actually to input NAND gate like this. Here also I use a to input NAND gate like this and this one becomes my Q and this one becomes Q bar and let me consider an input like this, apply an input like this. Now this is, uh, this latch is used here and some control input is applied here. Now it becomes an SR flip flop. Uh, a, an unclocked SR flip flop. Let us discuss about it. Now, if this is uh, at logic level 1 and this is at logic level 0, then what happens? This becomes 0 and this becomes 1 and when this is 0, irrespective of, irrespective of whether it is a 0 or 1, the NAND gate output becomes a 1 and, and when this is 1 and this one also becomes 1 with this 1 1, this output becomes 0 and irrespective of whether it is 0 or 1, the moment it becomes 0 output will be a 1, okay. Hence, this is consistent and the moment you make S equal to 1 and R equal to 0, so, Q is going to be 1 and Q, Q, R, Q bar is going to be 0. On the other hand, if this is 0 and this is 1, because of this symmetry here, this being 1, this becomes 0 and irrespective of this state, state of this input, once it is 0, output will be 1 and this one would be 1 and if it is 0, this one would be 1, 1, 1, the output will be 0. So, Q and Q bar will be with opposite signs. Now, with 0, 0, what happens with 0, 0? So, with 0, 0, this becomes 1, 1. With this bec becoming 1, 1, it remains in the same state. Whatever was the previous state, it remains on 1. If the previous state happens, happen to be if the previous state happened to be a 1 0 with this one becoming 1 1 and this one becoming 0, this will remain 1 and when this is 1 and this is 1, this one will remain 0 at 0. So, with 0 0, whatever was the previous state, the same state is maintained. And with 1, 1, of course, this is inconsistent. 1, 1 state is not applicable. So, this is an SR flip-flop with, without a clock. So, this is the, this is the logic and this is an SR flip-flop without a clock. Means, uh, the inputs, whenever the inputs change, outputs will change without any clock control.
upon power on any circuit upon power on due to the SMS rays in the devices, no two devices are identical in the manufacturing process. Due to asymmetry, one goes to logic level 1 and the other one is forced to logic level 0. Whichever is fast will go to, will attain a stage and uh, state and that will force the other one to take the opposite state. So, that is what happens upon power on itself. Now, let us discuss about a clock flip flop, SR flip flop. The circuit remains uh, the same almost. Only thing is a clock control is added. to the SR flip flop which was discussed just now. So, this is the clock input. Now, this is your set input, this is the reset input and the NAND gate outputs are connected to another pair of NAND gates as we discussed just now. This is Q and this is Q bar. Now, to this a feedback is connected from this output, feedback is applied from this output and to this NAND gate a feedback is applied from this output. Now, through the NAND gates, a NAND gate can be used as a control gate, then we apply the clock here. As we have seen, when these two outputs are 0, 0, when these two outputs are 0, 0, the, there is no change in the state. Either it is 1, 0 or 0, 1, the state does not change as long as this remains at 0, 0. So, this is what we observe for 0, 0, the output uh, state remains the same, it does not get disturbed. So, extending this reasoning here, as long as the clock input is, as long as the clock input is 0, this is 0, clock input is, so the output is, uh, I am sorry, the reasoning is the other way around. As long as the clock input is a 1, as long as the clock input is a 1, you have 0, 0 here and there is no change in the state. But when the clock input goes to 0, when the clock input goes to 0, then what happens is, so these clocks become, these inputs become effective, these inputs are passed to the outputs and the S and R here gets uh, changed. If it is a 1 here and it is a 0 here, the 1 is the 1 is applied to the to this side and this one gets latched to 1 when this is this one is passed to the output and because of the clock control in this fashion the circuit works with a clock so here we have to see the logic when there is a 1 here and uh, uh, if you use a AND gate, a direct AND gate, you can make it effective with these pulses. If it is a two input AND gate instead of an AND gate, you can make it effective with positive going pulses. When it is 1 and when this is 1, the output is going to be 1. And when the output changes to 1 for a short period, Q will be 1 and Q bar will become 0. 
and when the input is zero itself when the clock input is zero irrespective of the other two inputs the output remains in zero and the same state continues the same thing happens when it is zero and one the input is applied and then the circuit works hence clock control can be obtained up, applied here to the circuit and it works like a an SR flip flop with clock input. There is another type of interesting gate known as a JK flip flop. The JK flip flop uses an SR clock flip flop. And it, it uses a clock input here. It's Q, Q bar. Now, to the S input, now you have some control through an AND gate. And you call it as J, and you apply Q bar here, Q and bar here. That means this is connected to this point. Similarly here, you apply QN, feedback, give a feedback of QN from the, by connecting the output to this. And you call this input as K input. And here is the clock input. Now with this, that means this is connected to uh, this point and this is connected to this point. Now with these interconnections, it, it becomes a JK flip flop and the truth table of the JK flip flop is as given here. If this is JN and this KN as the input inputs and the output is QN plus 1 for 0, 0 the output remains in the same state in, this, in the previous state itself and with 1 0 it becomes 1 and with 0 1 become it becomes it gets reset to 0 and with 1 1 very interestingly so this one changes state it this one acts like a toggling toggling flip flop when you connect 1 1 here if the previous state is a 0 and then you, when you apply a clock pulse, it, from 0 it goes to 1. And if it is in 1, when the next clock pulse is applied, it becomes a 0. So like this, when the inputs are 1, 1, so this one works like a toggling flip-flop. When it is 1, 1, if you apply a clock like this, if this is a clock waveform, and previously, if Q, Q happens to be 0, so at this transition, say this is a uh, negative edge triggering flip-flop, then at this transition, since Q0 is a 0, the next state will be a 1, Q1 will be a 1. And when this, is, when the, when this state is 1, for the, for the next transition, it goes down to 0. So like this, so the output will be toggling between a 1 and 0 like this. For every clock pulse, it will change its state once. So this is what a toggling flip-flop is. Please note that this can be used to divide the frequency input clock frequency by 2, interestingly. So that's how it works. Let us now examine the truth table. When both the inputs are zeros, naturally, irrespective of QN and QN bar, this is going to be 0, 0. And in an SR flip-flop, when the inputs are 0, 0, irrespective of the clock balls, the output remains in the same state, in the same previous state. Therefore, it is QN. Now, when this is a 1 and this is a 0, 
if this is previously 0, that means this, this is previously 1, due to 1, 1 here, s yes will become 1 and due to 0 here, this one will be 0, s yes will be 1, r will be 0 and when a clock pulse is applied, output will go to 1. Similarly, if the situation is a uh, 0, 1 and, the, and previously it is a 1, let us say it is previously it is a 1. So, if it is a 1 here, it is 1, 1, it will become 1, R will become 1 and this being 0, 0, 0 will become 0. Now, with 0, 1 and a clock pulse applied, we know that in a SR flip flop, output will become a 0 and this one will be a 1. Now, previously if it was in 0 state and this was 1 naturally and when the next state is in next input is 0, 1 and you apply a clock pulse, so it will again become 0, 1 and it will remain in the same state. With 1, 1 of course as I mentioned, it toggles because with 1, 1, If, it, if this happens to be 1 and this happens to be 0, because it is 0, 1, it becomes 0 and because the input is 1, 1, it becomes 1 and with the clock pulse transition, this will now becoming because of 0, 1 at the clock transition, it becomes 0, 1. It changes state when the inputs are 1, 1. At the clock transition, it changes state. Similarly, when it is a when it is 1 0 when the output is say 0 1 when the output is 0 1 when the input is 1 1 so this 1 and 1 it becomes a 1 and this 0 and 1 it becomes a 0 here because of 1 0 as the sr input and when clock transition occurs this one becomes 1 and this one becomes 0 and this one continues. Hence, the it works like a toggling flip-flop. This flip-flop works like a toggling flip-flop. And please note that according to this diagram, it is acting like a divided by 2 and it can divide the frequency by 2. Now, if this input, if this output is applied to another toggling flip-flop, as clock to it, it will again divide its frequency by 2. This way you can have frequency division of clock when clock is applied to the input. So, a toggling flip flop is one which has given the clock input. Whenever there is a transition, the output state changes. It is known as a T flip flop, toggling flip flop. With JK flip flops, we can have another interesting flip flop. Please note that this now, this flip flop can now be treated as uh, this, this is the symbol used for the JK flip flop. It has a J input, it has a K input, and it uses a clock input, and it has a Q and its complementary states as the output. This is the symbol for JK flip flop. A JK flip flop is equal to an SR clock SR flip flop with this control. This whole thing can be connected in this fashion. It can be a D flip flop is a small variation of a JK flip flop. If the JK inputs are maintained such that whatever is the is the state of J 
its complement is applied to K, here this is J input and this is K input, a complement is applied to K input. That means whenever this is a 1, we are forcing this to 0 and vice versa. Then what happens is, whatever is applied here, the moment a clock pulse is applied, so that is latched into it. If this is a 1, so it becomes a 1. If it is a 0, it becomes a 0 after the clock pulse is applied. Hence, it can be used as a storage device. A D flip flop can be used as a storage device.